Sunday. I'm here. I'm wearing makeup. I'm all dressed up. So, you know, I'm used to being in my pajamas so and scrubs. So, <laughs> you know, luckily I have some boots on that feel like slippers. So I think I'm okay. <laughs> really enjoyed the film. Really, you really did. enjoyed the film. Uh, how did how did it all begin? What was the, the first conversation you had? Was Christy the first person you were in contact with or how did it all begin? Uh, well, the book came out. We mm. did a little bit of a book tour. It was like a little sparkler fizz and then nothing. And then I was still at work and still doing what I do. And then Charles Graber said, hey, Darren Aronofsky, I think, bought the rights to this and they're going to make it into a movie. And I was, I said, no, they're not. Like, and uh, you know, in my mind, I'm like, no, they're not. Like, this is, you know, <laughs> how many people say they're going to make movies about something? So, no, I didn't, I didn't believe it. And then Christy Wilson Cairns showed up. We spent a lot of time together. Um, and she, she really made me feel more comfortable about what the script was going to be about. I didn't want this to be sensationalizing Charlie Cullen. Yeah, she seemed, I was, I was talking to her before, she seems like almost the perfect person to, to have been there from the beginning in terms of a screenwriter because she has such a great sense of what it was like and obviously she spent time with you. It must have been great to, to see her work come to fruition. Yeah, and we did foster this friendship between us over you know the past seven years, eight years now, I think that we've known each other. And so as our friendship has evolved, also the script evolved. And I think that both of us were able to kind of grow up with the script. And it was her first paying job, mm. which is really cool that I got to be there right in the beginning. And yes, she, she made it very, very clear that it was very much about our friendship. It took a, lot of, a, a, a few years for it to kind of coalesce for you all. You must have been quite excited when finally Oh, it work, was a roller got, coaster yeah. because I would get a call to say, oh, this is happening. And then a couple of months go by and we don't hear anything. And then another couple of months and it's, oh, this is happening. And I stopped being excited until I got a call that I was going to meet Tobias. And then it was another roller coaster. But, but Tobias really brought it home. I didn't want to, I didn't want to be a part of anything that didn't have to be as attached to it after we met. Yeah, I spoke to Jessica and Eddie earlier as well, and Jessica was saying about how she's played real life people before, but she's never had the real person sort of off camera or anything else. But you, it sounds like you, again, had a fantastic friendship with her, and she's very, she's, I feel like she's a very responsible actor when she plays real life people, and that experience seems to have helped her portray you, even though you were there. I'm glad. Well, I didn't realize, I, you know, someone else just said that she uh, she was a little intimidated because mm. I was on set and I was like, Jessica Chastain's intimidated by me being on set. Like, you know, you just don't see them as real people until you meet them as real people. And that's who she is. She's playing a part and it's a craft and it's a job. And I guess I would be the same way if somebody was standing next to me. Well, no, probably not. I'm kind of a badass. So I, uh, you know, while I'm doing my trauma, while I am running a trauma unit, I just, I just do. So, yeah, that's surprising to me that she, yeah. would, she would be a little intimidated. <laughs> what was your reaction to, to Eddie cause, uh, in playing this part? Because he's such a nice guy and everyone's seen him do some amazing work play you know obviously Fantastic Beasts and Stephen Hawking was it was it weird watching him because he seems to have embodied the bits that he needs to in order to help help tell the story that was one of the most emotional parts of it is that I you know I haven't seen Charlie Cullen in probably 10 years now and watching him on that screen it was charlie mm. it was charlie it was the way that he moved the way that he spoke the way that he looked at my character amy and it was him he became charlie and i had to i had to grasp that this wasn't the real charlie this wasn't my real life playing out and yet it was it, it, it was very odd but I saw the trailer before I saw the movie and the part in the trailer where he changes into the murderer, mm. I 
couldn't breathe. I could not breathe. It felt like someone knocked the wind out of me. He is, he, he's that perfect in this role. He's that perfect. And you've got the documentary as well on the horizon as well. So lots of, lots of things. I just saw things the documentary and it is stunningly brilliant. That's good. It's a good double bill. On, on Netflix, you can watch those together. Yeah, and not see a lot you of and see yeah, them. not a lot of press with a documentary though. It's kind of like here it is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, people! Hey, people! People do like their documentaries. They do. They're so easy to kind yeah. of stream now, so I'm sure people yeah. will watch it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time. Absolute pleasure talking to you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey. hey.